Well, it might not come as a surprise to most of you that I'm probably not the best car mechanic in town. I recognize when something doesn't sound right, and I'll get on the phone, hey, Dennis, come take a ride with me. And we get in the car, and he says, yeah, that, I've never heard that sound before either. So sometimes we have those little adventures like that. But, but, but there's one thing that you know, I pay attention to. Sometimes that little yellow light comes on, and I go, hmm. I read the book, oh, that's just a, war a mild warning. But every now and then if the red one comes on, I go, I think I'm supposed to pay more attention to the red ones than the yellow ones. So I'll, I'll, I'll definitely take it somewhere when the red one comes on. Overall, I think I know just enough to keep me out of trouble or to get me in more trouble than I planned when it comes to cars. One thing I have learned, though, is that proper alignment makes all the difference in the way a car drives. You, you may have heard the story of a car that was driving down the road one day when the two front tires got into an argument. The right tire didn't agree with the direction in which they were going and wanted to go to the right. So it pulled that way as hard as it could. Well, that really ticked off the left tire, who retaliated by getting wobbly and pulling left. You're wearing me out, screamed the right tire. Well, you're making me lose my grip on the situation, sniped the left. And so after several hours of debating, yelling, and arguing, the left tire finally said, look, let's just agree to disagree on this. And the right tire said, okay. But what made you decide that we should stop arguing? And the left tire said, well, we just seem to go around and around and around and nothing ever changes. <laughs> there is a spiritual side to that illustration, my friends. Often I think our lives exhibit that kind of tension. We are pulled to the right and we are pulled to the left. And uh, sometimes it's hard for us to find the spiritual center that we all need in order to more completely experience the power and the presence of God in our lives. I'd like to suggest this morning that Advent is one of those times during the Christian year, with the season of Lent being the other, in which we are called upon to examine our lives and see what it is that God is laying out in front of us. What is it that God is doing to try and get our attention. You see, Advent is that time during which we are asked to realign our lives and prepare to follow the Christ that has come into this world as a babe in the manger long ago, but that also has promised that he's coming into the world again, this time as Lord and King and Master of all creation. If you were here last week, I sort of hinted about that uh, as we celebrated Christ the King Sunday. One day, Jesus is coming home. And when he comes home, he's going to bring his kingdom with him. And Advent sort of exists in the tension between celebrating that first coming and his presence with us, but at the same time looking forward to that other coming. And so we enter into this season. It's about the coming of Christ into the world. But it's also about us acknowledging the power and the presence of Christ in our lives right now at this very moment. You know, I don't think it would come as a surprise to most of us if I were to say there's a big gap in our lives between where we are right now in our relationship with God and where God wants us to be. Think about that. I'm sure all of us see that gap in our own lives. Perhaps it's time to take our spiritual lives to the car dealer, so to speak, and get an alignment. Let's get a good looking over. Let's make sure that all the parts are fully lubed, that everything is turning the way it should. Let's make sure that we get rid of those things that are showing the wear and the tear of this journey on which we find ourselves and to replace them with the new parts that are necessary to deepen our spiritual journey. This is what Advent allows us to do. This is the work that the church undertakes as she moves through the four Sundays leading to the celebration of Christmas and the recognition of the Christ child. 
once again in our midst. It's time for the church to spend time looking at and correcting those things that draw us away from our true focus. And as we begin the current liturgical year today, we look at the world around us and we notice all kinds of things. Distractions that are trying to get between us and our following of Jesus Christ. Let me name a few. The threat of a nuclear North Korea. Natural disasters in recent hurricanes in Florida, Texas, Puerto Rico. The threat of volcanic eruption in Bali. A federal government that struggles to get its act together. The downfall of prominent men because of the way that they have treated women. Gunmen coming into churches and murdering congregants. Financial pressures, often exacerbated by the felt need to make Christmas a special time for those we love through the giving of extravagant gifts. Reports of human slavery rearing its head in Libya. Racial unrest in our own country. I could go on. I could, I, I could fill the, the day describing the problems that we face as humans in this world today, but I think that you get the picture. There's a lot of things out there that are distracting us, that are pulling us away from the focus that God would have us to have. There's enough tension and stress in our lives and in the world around us to pull us away from the focus of Christmas, and Advent helps us to realign and brings back a more centrist approach to our faith with a proper understanding of our role as followers of the Christ's child. You see, Isaiah's words help us to see the world in which we live through a wider lens. He helps us to step back from the narrow focus that we have in our lives and the world in which we live and gives us a better perspective of what we face. For one thing, Isaiah reminds us that the struggle we face with our lives is not just something that our generation faces. Others have faced their struggles and failures before us, and people that follow us will also face their own unique set of struggles and failures. There have always been those times when we felt that God was distant, maybe even angry with us as it seems to portray in Isaiah today. Likewise, there have been those times when we felt close to God and that we were doing God's will. We've always lived in a world affected by the stain of sin and we're often blown around like the leaves that have fallen from the limbs in autumn. Well, one way to combat this sense of lostness the sense of aloneness, the sense of forgottenness is through the rituals of the church that focus our lives back towards God. The rituals that realign us so that we can journey forward on a straight and narrow path rather than wandering to and fro as our lives might take us. Like the psalmist says, we need to be confident that the Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As we lit that first Advent candle today, we engaged in that annual ritual that reminds us that as we move towards Christmas, we are moving to that time in which God physically and tangibly reminds us that His Son, Jesus, was sent to save us from our sins. He was sent to deliver us from our spiritual death. As Isaiah points out, he was sent to remind us that regardless of all the disaster, regardless of the gloom and doom that besets this world, Isaiah says, yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. And now consider, we are your people. You see, as we move forward with our Advent celebrations, we need to let that divine potter put us back on the potter's wheel 
and to shape us and to align us and our lives so that we become the vessel that he has created us to be. May we pray. Most gracious and most holy God, indeed take us and shape us and mold us into the person that you have created us to be as we seek to follow you more closely, not only this Advent season, but all year through. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.